So this is the ZoomMed Snake Kit. I'm going to show you how to put one of these together. First, now the nice thing about the ZoomMed Kit is that it comes with two places to lock it. There's two things here. So just keep that in mind as you're going through and putting it together that you should be looking for the two locks um, and you don't want to lose those. And so there, here are all the different products that come with it. You get a mini deep dome, which is perfect for your 100 watt daylight bulb. Can't. So this is your daylight bulb. This can be a source of heat and light for daytime, but if it's in the middle of summer, which right now here in Southern California, it is getting to be the hotter part of the year, I would actually not recommend a 100 watt bulb for summertime use. You're going to want to probably go to the, a 40 watt or 60 watt if you're here in Southern California and you're not using a whole bunch of the AC. With a household temperature of 76 to 78 degrees, you really only need a 40 watt bulb, especially if you're going to be using a heat pad like this one here. This is a 10 to 20 gallon size. This is going to be going right on this side here. So if you look and you see, it actually fits perfectly on the corner here. And then here is the bedding. This is the aspen bedding. I actually really like this for snakes like this corn snake here. It's around my neck. The aspen creates a nice substrate that they can burrow into. Um, they'll create little burrows, they'll hide in it. It actually adds an extra, um, it's almost like having an, an extra hiding spot that goes across the entire bottom of the cage, which is perfect for these guys. And then, the nice thing about these kits is they also come with a water bowl, a nice easy to clean one that if I remember correctly, is also safe to put in your dishwasher, which makes it easy to keep it sterile and clean. And then here's some water treatment if you're concerned about the quality of the water that you're giving. If you have tap water, say you live in the city, um, and you wouldn't, <laughs> he's hanging on to my uh, keys here. This little guy. Uh, if you're concerned about the quality of the water, um, or you just want to play it safe, this rep is safe. You just need a couple of drops in the water dish, and you've got safe potable water that is good for your snake to drink. And then. Here's one hiding spot. It comes with a medium-sized habitat, and it also comes with, comes with the natural bush vine here, which is going to provide an extra little hiding spot for them to stay in. Okay. All right, and then the last thing is your thermometer, which is one of the most important tools you've got. Here we go. So here in the corner is where you're going to find the locks. There's two of them, as you can see. I am just going to tape it here on the side so I don't lose them. Now and again, I'm going to be using this for a, a corn snake, um, so I'm actually going to just use the whole bag. But that's a good solid inch or so of bedding, which is perfect for corn snake or king snake or any kind of North American colubrid to burrow into. We'll get our water bowl in here. The water bowl, I always keep the water bowl on the cool side. Some people say that you can put the water bowl on the warm side to increase humidity if you've got a snake like a, like a ball python or anything like that. I actually really don't like doing that. Water can harbor bacteria and other harmful pathogens in it. Always want to keep the water cool to make it as difficult as possible for bacteria and algae and other nasty things to grow in the water. Think about it, if a snake's going to poop in the water bowl, which a snake like a corn snake almost always will, at least once or twice in its life, uh, probably once or twice a month, <laughs> if you to judge by the, the way that corn snakes here do things. Um, the last thing you want is the water bowl to be full of poopy water on the warm side. Let me tell you, that is a stink bomb. Um, just take my word for it. You don't want to experience that yourself. Just keep the water bowl on the cool side. Everybody's happy. It's the easy way to go. And then I always keep the habitat and at least the primary hiding spot on the warm side. And again, this is so that when they, they hide on the warm side, what will happen is that down in here, between the habitat and the bedding, it'll actually create a bubble of warm air from the heat rising up from the bottom where your heat pad's going to be um, and hitting the top of the habitat. So you'll find that when you get, if you were to get a digital thermometer with a probe and you put it in here, temperatures in here would easily be 5 to 10 degrees warmer than temperatures up here if you don't have a light. But lucky you, you're going to have your mini deep dome and daylight bulb. And then here's our nice fake plant. And then you can just even do, it's got a little suction cup on it, so you can stick it to the glass. Uh, and then your thermometer. And again, I always like to keep the thermometer on the warm side, so that way I know just how hot the snake's getting. If you want to, you can pick up a second or even third thermometer um, and put one on the cold side so you can see just how cold it gets. And then you can even keep one in the middle to see what the ambient temperature is. 
the and then the last thing, the biggest mistake I see people making is that they put the thermometer up here. You don't want to know what the temperature is at the top of the cage. That's not where the snake's going to be. You want to know what the temperature is at the bottom where the snake is. So I actually would hide it down here so you can see just how hot the hiding spot's going to be. So you see how that's right there? And then a neat thing, <coughs> it's actually Velcroed. So you can remove it, check it out, and put it back. And there we go. So that's how it is, just plain and simple. There's a whole lot else you can do to it. This is this tank set up with just the stuff that comes in the kit. And while it's serviceable, you can use it. It's honestly really boring. Um, so one way to, to spruce it up is going to be start using other from products such as the cork flats to create a more visually appealing and actually better for the snake kind of cage. You're going to want basically more than just this little cave for them to hide in. So one thing you can do, let's get this out right there, on the other side because we want the snake to be able to get close to the heat pad. And that's an important thing to consider when you're designing a cage is how close the snake can get to the heat sources. Here I didn't want to do what I'm about to do here on top of the heat pad just because with the amount of bedding that I'm about to put in, it wouldn't even be able to get near the heat pad. And two, you wouldn't be able to see your, your thermometer, which you, I've already put in here. So you're going to want to make sure that when you're setting it up, that you keep things like that in mind. So you see how I've got this nice and wedged in here? It's creating a little ledge. We're going to take our other bag of bedding. There we go. And look at that, we've got two levels. And now, and again, since we're, the heat pad is only covering a small area, you can now put the water bowl right here. And we can put this hut right up here. And let's do this right here. We've got a little jungly area. And then, on the other side, we can use this piece of cork, perhaps even do this right up here so because again we're going to have a light and so you can have the light sitting over here and create an actual basking area and for a snake like a, a corn snake they will actually they're an active really active north american species king snakes corn snakes milk snakes all of those so if you set it up right they will actually come out and bask up here in the morning when you turn the lights on it's one of the funner parts about having that kind of a snake so you set it up like that and then if you want to start getting making it look even better because again this is still kind of boring you can get things like the, the naturalistic flora and while no this isn't exactly a tropical terrarium something like this still looks kind of nice so we can do i think i want to do this one all right so we're going to put in this one i'm just going to put it in right here and then bend it down because it sticks out bend it down just a little bit and you guys will see why I'm using this particular one here in a second. I am actually really fond of using these, making it kind of look a little bit more like a natural cage. Alright, so we've got all of this, and then one more thing you can do is add in moss. Now, of course, it doesn't need it terribly humid, so you don't need to get the moss wet, but it does make the cage look really, really cool. So, Go ahead and just kind of sprinkle it in there. This is the, the green sphagnum moss that we carry on our website. This isn't exactly New Zealand sphagnum, but it does have a nice green texture to it. Nice, like that. This back here. And again, you notice I'm not being very specific about where I'm putting it, just kind of throwing it around. That looks a little bit more natural nature isn't very carefully placed so you don't have to worry too much about how precise you are and where you put the moss and stuff and the thing about a corn snake they're super inquisitive they're super active they want to get into every single nook and cranny so it doesn't matter how much you hide any of the hiding spots or any of the uh, crevices that they can get into the corn snake's going to be able to figure out how to get into it anyway what they do. Go ahead and do that. Have some right here. Have some right here. And there you go. Looks all natural. And on top of that, you didn't even need to get any background because it covers so much of the back of the cage. There's just a little gap here. So it actually it fills up the cage in a nice way. It gives your snake lots of places to hide and to move around in. And it just plain looks nice. This is way cooler than what the original kit was. So there's a lot more you can add to it. Now we've got it, the lid on. We've got our heat light on there and plugged in. Ta-da!
and then you turn it on and that's what it looks like. Um, and if you look, you can actually see that it, the, because it's that daylight blue bulb, it actually creates a very nice kind of white light. Not the yellowish kind of light that a basking light will, but a nice white display kind of a light. This little area here will heat up just enough for the snake to get out and want to sit there to get warm, especially after it eats. But down here, where we had our thermometer, remember? Uh, down there is going to be where it can get to the heat pad, and that's where you can keep it warm at night or during colder weather. It's going to be nice and insulated because not only is there all of that uh, shredded asp in there, but there's also the, the cork to create that bubble of warm air I was talking about, and now there's moss and even a second piece of cork on top of there creating different layers, just like us layering a jacket and shirts on, it's creating the same kind of layering effect, keeping it warmer down there, which is perfect, because then it makes it much easier for you to monitor temperatures, because then over here on the cold side, it is still room temperature. This whole area here isn't going to heat up because of the way that this is set up. So now you've got a nice range of temperatures that your snake's going to thrive at, which makes it much, much easier to care for, because now all you got to do, turn your light on in the morning, leave the heat pad on all the time, that's it, ta-da, you're done. Well, and change the water, of course, but...